against the Brotherhood. The U.S. nuclear force suffered a new blow today. Defense officials said two missile launch officers had been implicated in an illegal drug investigation at an Air Force base in Montana. That follows a series of security problems in nuclear ranks. The news came as Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel appeared at a missile base in Wyoming. There are new security worries this morning about our nuclear arsenal. Two Air Force officers with authority to launch nuclear missiles are now being investigated for possible illegal drug use. The latest black eye for our nuclear command and ABC's Martha Raddatz is tracking it all from Washington. Good morning, Martha. Good morning, George. What is so startling about these accusations this morning is that this is not the first time there have been accusations of misconduct at America's nuclear arsenals. The Air Force facilities where officers are supposed to be ensuring our safety and the security of the nuclear weapons they maintain. This morning, fallout at one of the nation's nuclear missile launch facilities. Two nuclear missile launch officers in charge of operating the nation's intercontinental ballistic missiles facing allegations of drug possession, removed from their positions pending an investigation. This bombshell coming the same day as a visit to a nuclear missile facility in Wyoming by Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel. And what you do every day, there is no room for error, none. But this is just the latest in a series of scandals involving the men and women who operate the nation's nuclear arsenal. Two top commanders overseeing nuclear weapons were fired last October. Investigations revealing one was gambling with counterfeit chips at an Iowa casino, while the other drinking so much on a visit to Moscow, he even needed assistance standing. In 2007, four top-ranking Air Force commanders were relieved of duty after a huge oversight left six nuclear warheads attached to a B-52 bomber flown from North Dakota to Louisiana and not discovered for 36 hours. That one was particularly frightening, but this morning the Air Force insists that there was no risk to the nuclear arsenal with this latest incident. Robin? That is reassuring. All right, Martha, thank you very much. Well, excerpts from former Secretary of Defense Robert Gates' new memoir paint a picture of a president who does not trust his own military. One in particular says, quote, all too early in the Obama administration, suspicion and distrust of senior military officers by senior White House officials, including the president and vice president, became a big problem for me as I tried to manage the relationship between the commander in chief and his military leaders. Well, according to our next guest, Gates wasn't the only official to witness this. Joining us now is retired Navy commander J.D. Gordon. He served as Defense Department spokesperson during the first nine months of the Obama administration. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning, Anna. Good morning, Tucker. Hey, J.D. First, uh, you say you noticed a switch between uh, the mood that, that staffers noticed uh, between the Bush administration and the Obama administration. Can you detail that for us? Yes, absolutely. I think everybody at the Pentagon realized the uh, tremendous attitude shift from the White House. President Obama came in talking about closing Guantanamo, and not just closing it. He said it was shameful. And really, he didn't know anything about Guantanamo. I had been to Guantanamo over 30 times in four years as the Pentagon spokesman for the Western Hemisphere. President Obama repeated a lot of things about the detention facility that just weren't true. So I think a lot of people in the military realized that, A, he didn't know what he was talking about, and B, that he was pl b blaming people that he shouldn't blame. And uh, also, he talked a lot about uh, repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell. According to Secretary Gates in the book, that was the only thing that President Obama really became animated about, was repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell which also rubbed a lot of people the wrong, de wrong way. And also these tremendous budget cuts. Right now, we're in the midst of $1 trillion in budget cuts to the Defense mm -hmm. Department, and that's going to hollow us out like during the 1970s. Don't ask, don't tell. Like, what does that have to do with defending the country? Um, so, J.D., you, you note something that almost nobody remembers or noticed, the purge of senior military officers by the Obama administration. Tell us about that. Right, yes. Um, I was in the studio on Fox & Friends um, about a month ago talking about the purge of senior military officers. There have been about 200 senior military officers fired under President Obama. That's the most in any recent presidential administration. And we're talking about four-star admirals and generals, uh, colonels, captains. Basically, if there's any whiff of controversy, President Obama basically just wants to get rid of people. 
No second question asked, just fire them. And it's really terrible because it's also weakening the military, this purge of senior military officers. And what do you think about um, the unilateral nature of, of the Obama administration really often being accused of not listening to military counsel? Yeah, I don't think that President Obama likes to listen to admirals and generals. I think he uh, knows it all, essentially. He's never lost an election. He's been very successful at everything he's ever done. So I think he distrusts the military. He trusts his own judgment. And I think that comes through in the uh, Gates book. I also think it's important to note that in Secretary Gates' book, you can see how politically calculated uh, President Obama is and uh, Secretary Clinton is. Basically, they, they put politics above national security for their decision to oppose the surge in Iraq in 2007. I think that's really important for Americans to know, especially as we move towards 2016. It's so striking to hear you say that Obama was willing to fire senior military brass for basically nothing when he's been so reluctant to fire any of his political staff for, for example, screwing up Obamacare so profoundly. Were these people fired because they were failing to protect America or were they fired for reasons other than that? Most of it was either personal misconduct or allegations against them. Uh, one guy got fired for counterfeit poker chips. But at the same time, he has this all-out assault on senior military officers. He's letting as many al-Qaeda guys go from Guantanamo as humanly possible. He just let 11 go within the last few months. Under the terms of the National Defense Authorization Act, about half the 155 there now are going to be released. I'm going to a march today, actually, in Washington. There's a march on the White House from this anti-Gitmo coalition that's made up of groups like Amnesty International and Reprieve. Center for Constitutional Rights. Believe it or not, these groups are linked to al-Qaeda financiers, communists, and anarchist groups. Yet these are the very people that President Obama is trying to support in closing Guantanamo. This is the, these are the people that he's trying to have their back. It's really shocking. If only more Americans knew about it, they'd be outraged. All right. Thank you. Uh, former DOD spokesperson and retired Navy Commander J.D. Gordon, we thank you for your time today.